Goff on his way. Here's the sport, but before we begin, I'm afraid that since the end of our last series, the BBC Complaints Unit has upheld a viewer's complaint about the show. And Mr Pord of Hythe in Kent wrote in to object about Rory McGrath making jokes at the expense of David and Victoria Beckham. He brings out the worst in the English football supporter with his yobbish humour, <laughs> not forgetting that he's a Scottish tub of love. <laughs> As I said, the BBC have upheld that complaint, so it is official. Rory, got anything to say on that? Irish tub of lard. <laughs> you don't dispute uh, low life and yobbish, though, I notice, Rory. How long have I known you, Arthur? Uh, nearly seven or eight minutes now, Rory. <laughs> <laughs> with Rory and Gary is a... ...live on stage with a performing duck. Unfortunately, the duck's agent wanted too much money, so instead <laughs> we've got Arthur Smith. <laughs> David Gowers off in Lahore. I think that's what his agent said. <laughs> so we welcome back Steve Davis. <laughs> and alongside him and Jonathan is an oarsman who's won gold medals at the last three Olympics. So in British rowing terms, he's frankly second rate. <laughs> Matthew Vincent. <laughs> now, since our last series, Britain has suddenly become good at sport. We won the Test Series against the West Indies, we won 11 gold medals at the Olympics, and the England football team leads the world at three-card brag. <laughs> so, Gary, Rory and Arthur, it's football for you. ...of Euro 2000. Oh, he's given the penalty! He's given the penalty! And he scores, and England have under two minutes to save the day. Now, the fact that Kevin Keegan's England went out of Euro 2000 was, of course, nothing to do with poor management, lack of skill, or anyone called Neville. There were myriad <laughs> other excuses given by Keegan and his team for their failure. We found seven in all, and we'd like you to come up with three of them, Gary's team, one point for each. Well, he was very unlucky with injuries, wasn't he? Phil Neville didn't get injured. <laughs> How unlucky can you get? Well, you know, I think one of the excuses must have been there are too many foreign players in the Premiership and none of them are in the England team. <laughs> I'll yeah. give you one point for that. That is one of them. Oh, that's handy. Was it something to do with the card school? Did um, David Beckham lose 50 grand because he got so excited to have Mr Bun the Baker in his hand? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there I go again, you Scottish tub of lard, Roy. <laughs> or, or did Anne Robinson walk on and say, Kevin Keegan, you are the weakest link. Goodbye. <laughs> Actually, don't, don't, don't knock Anne because I borrow her beard trimmer. <laughs> Was it, was it one of them because Keegan said, admitted himself that he was short at this level? Yes, that's, that's two points. You could have had, one, they were disadvantaged because only one of the squad had experience playing abroad. Two, all the other teams had the advantage of having players in England, which he got. Three, the Premiership is a great league, but it doesn't fit in with the style of international football. Four, none of the players knew how to pass the ball. <laughs> Keegan couldn't come up with a way of solving problems. Six, Keegan was a little bit short for the job. And best of all, this from the England coach Les Reed explaining the defeat against Portugal. We didn't expect to go into a 2-0 lead as early as we did. Psychologically, that may have thrown us. <laughs> Keegan's other famous sayings are, I don't think there's anyone bigger or smaller than Maradona. <laughs> He's using his strength, and that's his strength, his strength. <laughs> and I'd love to be a mole on the wall in the Liverpool dressing room. <laughs> and of course, stupidest of all, Phil Neville, get your shirt on, you're playing left back. <laughs> now, Steve, Jonathan and Matthew, your questions about Tottenham's Les Ferdinand. Now, Les used to play for QPR next to the BBC in his native Shepherd's Bush. And Ferdinand! 
Recently, Les was accused of being involved in the wrecking of the Blue Peter Garden, also in Shepherd's Bush, back in 1983. So what, Steve's team, is Les's version of events? He's, I noticed in the, uh, not now much about football, but I did notice the clothes they were wearing, and he's wearing the tightest shorts I've ever seen on a grown adult male in that second place. <laughs> and in cold weather, that would give you a Blue Peter. Is there a connection? <laughs> <laughs> but you wear tight shorts as well, they're in your sport. Skin tight. Actually, I'll tell you something. At the, uh, the, the medal ceremony, did you notice that the, uh, even though you actually won the gold medal, your team, the Italian lads in the meat and two veg department was a, a stroke ahead of you, weren't they? <laughs> <laughs> Steve, Steve we're, all, we're all applauding the nation's champion and you're checking out the balls on the... <laughs> what are you doing looking down there? Oh, well, it was obvious, wasn't it? Well, no, well, it was to me. Well, I was... <laughs> I was, I was following uh, Princess Anne's eye line. <laughs> <laughs> you, have you ever been on Blue Peter? Actually, I've been to the studios. I've, I've got a silver badge. Yeah. Have you? And what did you do? What did they get you to do there? I was potting browns. <laughs> no, 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 no. Different Blue Peter. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, was potting, I was potting brownies. You're potting Small brownies? Okay. What, potting... like the junior girl scouts? Yes. I, I, don't ask me why, but I was there. They, they'd done something in their local area where they, they sort of simulated a game of snook on a massive, massive uh, scale. So I went into the Blue Deeper Studios, and um, they were all dressed in different colours, these brownies, and I had my cue in my dress suit. I'm not boring, am I? <laughs> David! <laughs> This must, have been, this must have been the days when Richard Bacon was hosting the show. Because right. they were crazy days. I, I struck a white brownie and she rolled head over the hills and hit a... You know what, Steve, I'd stop now if I were you. <laughs> so, back to the Blue Peter Garden. Was it just because they're, they were, they're just a bunch of frustrated inner city youths? Once they finished passing the duchy, they had nothing left to do with their time. <laughs> They saw a garden, they went in. We've all done things like that when we're young. You, when you were youngster, Matthew, you were eating, weren't you? Yep. Eaton, I'm sure even eating boys, when they went out, you saw a garden. What would you do if you strolled in there? Mow the lawn. It's <laughs> called <laughs> Blue Peter, anyway. The flag. The flag. The flag. The flag. The flag. The flag. But why call a children's TV show after a naval flag? <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody here know? It's a children's flagship programme. Oh, oh. Gary! <laughs> Well, on BBC TV recently, Les would only admit to helping other members of his local teenage gang over the wall of Television Centre. But now, Les has a different story. I made a comment about helping some people over the blue Peter Garden wall to wreck a garden, but um, I actually didn't. It was a joke and it's just been blown out of all proportion. Now, Les made that original admission on BBC Choice. The police are appealing for witnesses. <laughs> For many years, singer Jimmy Somerville was thought to have been the culprit when the words Blue Peter Garden were found in his diary, until another entry was recently discovered, Peter Blue Me Garden. <laughs> and at the end of that round, Steve's team have no points and Gary's team have two. Sporting Bluff now, where the sides try to work out who on the other side is telling the truth. Gary's team, your subject is the biggest hero of the Sydney Olympics. Sorry, Matthew. It's Eric the Eel. I'm not sure he's going to make it, is he? No, he is. This is, this is the Olympics. He's got 17,000 people shouting for him. This is going to be amazing. Eric Musambani Malonga of Equatorial Guinea wins heat one of the men's 100 meters freestyle one minute 52.72 eric musambani was dubbed eric the eel after finishing just 7.37 seconds outside the record for the 200 meters freestyle sadly his event was the 100 meters <laughs> but what does equatorial guinea's favorite son consider to be his greatest achievement steve's team matthew Eric the Eel's greatest achievement is being named Equatorial Guinea's first astronaut, should they ever have a space programme. Eric the Eel's greatest achievement is being named Employee of the Month at Equatorial Guinea's first ever McDonald's. <laughs> Eric the Eel's greatest achievement is meeting Michael Barrymore. Well, you know, uh, actually the McDonald's <laughs> one, I won Employee of the Month. He was a nice little lad. Uh, <laughs> He used to make hamburgers up in the attic. Sweet boy. <laughs> Actually, I'll tell you what, just slightly to one side, 
I was chatting with a friend, it turns out to be a friend of Eric Neal, yeah. who told me this joke. Right. <laughs> 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 Seamless! Nicely <laughs> done, sir. How does Bob Marley like his donuts? We're jamming, we're jamming, we're jamming, we're jamming. <laughs> What does he say to his mate when he's giving him a donut? I hope you like jamming too. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're going to have to plump for um, Michael Barrymore. So you think Jonathan was telling the truth? Let's see. Yes. Yes, Jonathan was speaking the truth. Eric the Eel says his proudest moment was when he came to Britain and met his hero, Michael Barrymore, who was apparently a massive star in Equatorial Guinea. Eric the Eel trained in a local river in the African rainforest, and at one stage he did actually smash the World 100 Metres record. Unfortunately, it didn't count because it was crocodile-assisted. <laughs> Steve, team, your question is about Ronnie O'Sullivan. Here he is, missing an easy red in the recent British Grand Prix against Graham Dot. Now, Ronnie had a very good reason for missing that pot, but what was it, Gary's team? Arthur? Uh, because he just heard that his father had been released from prison. Ronnie O'Sullivan missed that pot because a pregnant woman in the audience went into labour. Ronnie O'Sullivan missed that pot because one of the Teletubbies appeared in his line of vision. <laughs> And I'd like to pick you up on the fact that this was an easy pot. This was a very difficult pot. I was For you, yeah. Not in this <laughs> We're talking Ronnie O'Sullivan. The boy can play. <laughs> I, I was sitting... I, I'd lost in the first round of that tour. I was sitting at home and I applauded that shot. <laughs> Steve, we knew you'd lost in the first round. You always <laughs> yeah. do, do <laughs> Oh, Gary, hard. Hey, Gary, on. this is not your image, Gary. Hey, Steve, offer him outside. Go, offer him today. outside. Wouldn't that, off be, wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't that be the dullest fight in the history? <laughs> in the car park. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you win. Um, so, what did you say? You said maybe a pregnant woman. Or he was down, he, was down, he, he thought he heard a telly tubby, but it was Steve Davis coming to the table going, uh oh. <laughs> While we're on the subject, though, let's face it, you know it might have been. Maybe it isn't one of the answers. Maybe it's the fact that he suddenly realised halfway through that, let's face it, snooker isn't a proper sport. <laughs> How can it be a sport, any sport where you wear a dinner suit <laughs> and you don't sweat and you can drink beer? It's not a proper suit. It's not a proper sport. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not a proper sport, Steve, really. Come on, own up. No, it's not really, is it? <laughs> Very good. Sharp as a knife. <laughs> not like, can we just hear it for our national hero here, ladies and gentlemen, Matthew Ray. Ray. Gold. He's out there all weathers in a canoe. Sport. I mean, look at Eric the Eel, for example, there. We've been taking the mickey out of poor Eric the Eel. I mean, he's got a bloody boat and three other people to <laughs> You're not fit to lick the boots of Eric Neal if he wore them, and he probably is, he's that slow. <laughs> have you got your medals? Do you carry them around with you? Because I've never held a gold medal. This won't surprise you. Do you have them with you? For security purposes. <laughs> i tell you what, look, can I put it on? Go on. Because with this outfit, it's Snoop Doggy Dog. Look at that. <laughs> your mama! Your mama! Let's have a look. Hold it. So, is Dad out of jail? I don't think it's that no, one. Do you think? That, I, don't yeah, I, I know one. for sure it's not that one, actually. All right. No. Um, <laughs> 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 We're not going to... Telly Tubbies, you reckon it's... He might have spotted some Tubby Custard mm. until he realised it was just <laughs> Stephen Henry working on his spots. <laughs> <laughs> he could execute them. <laughs> I tend to think the most likely answer is the pregnant woman. Now, I think, I remember reading about this at the time, and I think, ludicrous it sounds, I think it is something to do with the Teletubbies. Right, so you think that Rory was telling the truth. Let's see if you're right. Was it Rory? Rory? <laughs> Well done, good decision. <laughs> so Rory was right, Ronnie O'Sullivan was put off by a Teletubby. Let's have a look. That's what uh, put O'Sullivan off. Didn't expect to see that in his eye line. <laughs> <laughs> Ronnie's porn baron dad is in prison for murder, his mum's been in jail for tax fraud, and his uncle's inside on porn charges. He's actually thinking of robbing a bank so he can have a proper family Christmas. <laughs> and so, at the end of that round, Steve's team have three points and Gary's team have five.
Time now for our celebrations round. We show our teams a celebration. They have to explain it. Gary's team, it's that squeaky clean, all-round English cricket hero for you, Alex Stewart, scoring a century against Zimbabwe during the summer. He's coming back. There's oh, trouble there as the trouble. in. Damn. Oh, he's very tight, surely. In we think. He's made it. Well, that's the Alex Stewart century. Great performance. So, how do you explain that celebration? Yeah, you know, it's obviously giving ten to one to his Indian bookmakers. <laughs> <laughs> Let me say, he didn't do it. Alex, definitely innocent of that dreadful, heinous crime. So what he was actually doing, he was going. He was remembering some of Gower's scores. One, <laughs> nil. <laughs> anyway, I know the answer to this. Go on. <laughs> Thank God, Thank God for that. <laughs> I think. No, you don't, it was, Gary. Um, Gary, we can't see your hand. It was one nil <laughs> to Chelsea. One nil to Chelsea. In the against... cup final. Yes, okay. correct. I'll okay. give you three points for that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. The answer is that Alex Stewart is a die-hard Chelsea fan and his innings coincided with the cup final against Aston Villa. That was the moment he realised his team had won 1-0. Alex Stewart was furious the other day when there was a huge seven-second pause before he was given out. The umpire was waiting for the verdict of the third bookie. <laughs> Steve's team, we take you back to the Olympics and the second biggest hero of the Olympics, sorry again Matthew, it's Maurice Green. Here he is leading the American sprint team home in the relay. Maurice Green, the individual champion, now wins the relay for America. America for Brazil silver, Cuba bronze. Well, Lewis, if you see him around town, well, you're not going to see him. We might see him around town tonight, I guess, in Sydney. I'd avoid them. They're going to be unbearable. Now, as you heard there, the Americans were criticised for those over-the-top celebrations, but there was a story behind them. What was it? They're wankers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, wait. I think you've cut to the quick there, okay. but more. <laughs> we, we thought about this in the Coxes for a lot, because we thought we could do that kind of thing, celebration. Yeah. But we were worried, because if Steve got down at that position, he'd never get back up. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's not going to compete again, is he? But are you? You haven't let us know yet. Um, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> you get good money for being a river taxi in Uckfield at the moment. <laughs> Some of the fallback got. Can we have a look at that picture again? Because we, uh, we need fresh stimulus. They, uh... Yeah. They were a bit on that. Not, not as well endowed as the, uh, the Italian Stop team. Stop looking! No. <laughs> you will. Just for a second! He's, he's, <laughs> he's got nothing down there. It's, it's like Action Man. nothing, is there? Look. I tell you what, I can't mention it. Scary Spice has overdone it at the gym, hasn't she? <laughs> <laughs> Any ideas over here? Uh, uh, oh, that's it! Oh, I do apologise if I put you out. <laughs> the celebrations were based on the antics of WWF's best-known wrestler, The Rock. He's been described as the most electrifying man in sports entertainment, after Steve Davis. <laughs> it's typically American, really. I mean, you wouldn't catch Matthew here winning a race and then staggering along his boat, hugging his teammate, falling in the river, and then getting so pissed he leaves his gold medal in a taxi. <laughs> Oh, no, you would find me doing that. <laughs> and the scores at the end of that round are Steve's team with three and Gary's team with eight. <laughs> Time now for two grown men to put on blindfolds and stagger around in the dark as we play Field the Sportsman. It's Gary and Rory first this week, if you'd like to take your positions, gentlemen. Scottish tub of lard, indeed. <laughs> I've lost two stone, you know. Oh, no, I found it again. <laughs> <laughs> OK, blind falls up. And can we have our first mystery guest, please? Conquer the fear, Gary. Conquer the fear. <laughs> <laughs> and your time starts now. <laughs> ah, but obviously it's somebody oh. very, very famous. Very popular. Yeah. 
It's not Alan Hansen, then. <laughs> wet as well. well mind so you, it might be. Hang on. <laughs> He's wet. Famous and wet. It's you, Gary. <laughs> Careful. Um, um, oh dear, it's taking safe sex a bit too far, isn't it? <laughs> now, people always say to me, Ooh, you know, when you've got a bloke, like, you know, it's obviously a bloke, aren't you tempted to go straight for the prick? <laughs> well, I am. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, sorry. <laughs> it's, it's not uh, one of the flood victims from York, is it? Oh, hang on. <laughs> Okay. It's a swimmer, it can it's only swimmer. be one man. That Can't. bloke, um, Terry the Tadpole. <laughs> uh, Tadpole. <laughs> Eric the Eel. Hey <laughs> so, bloke comes on in skin tight suit. You know where Steve Davis's eyes are going straight away. <laughs> Uh, I'll just put him in my little league table. Uh, here we go. <laughs> okay, Jonathan and Steve. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't have started down that road, should I? Well, you know, oh. you can't account for your genes, can you? <laughs> and can we have our second mystery guest, please? He's a big bloke, won't we? Your time starts now. Hold on. <laughs> it's a horse's ass. <laughs> and that's just Jonathan. <laughs> hey! No, no, it's um, it's Mandy Dingle from Emmerdale, isn't it? <laughs> I like I'm big. I tell you that. What's that? It's like a sword. It's a sword person. It's a it's one a of the mask. three musketeers. Is this a sail in Little Whites? What's this now? <laughs> What's this? Saddle, leg, knee, knee. He's got, yeah, a, don't, he's got a gun. Don't pull the trigger. Please, don't. He's got a gun. He's <laughs> <laughs> got a gun. Uh, now we know John Wilkes. Well, there you got a sword. What do you need a gun for? Is it like a really bad fence who finishes them off? <laughs> it's a lady, I think. Wait, she's not bad, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Could you just ease up a bit, love? I just want to get me out of the mood. <laughs> it's all for the game, I tell you. It's not for me, it's for the game. <laughs> you know what it is? It's that Thai bride, David Alder. She's come on the one week, hasn't she? Well, World All Sports Champion. I think it's a um, modern pentathlon, I think we have here. Yeah, I guess, uh, it Stephanie is, in Cook, fact, I believe. Stephanie, Stephanie, Stephanie Cook. So the scores at the end of that round are Steve's team with six points and Gary's team with 11. <laughs> we close the show now by playing the name game. The leaders goes first, which is Gary's team. So Rory will be doing the clues. 90 seconds. <laughs> and your time starts now. Um, <laughs> um, English defender, Romania's favourite footballer. Le left back, Philip Neville. allegedly. Yeah. <laughs> um, if he's a boxer, um, if I, what comes after one? -a? Two. -a. Dennis Two. -a. Two -a. Very good. David. David Two. -a. Excellent. This <laughs> is um, a mobile phone named after him. New England manager. Benny Sven Gor Sven Goran Eriksson. Sven Eriksson. You want a cycling gold medal? Cycling gold medal in the Jason Queeley. Very good. Um, this is the uh, oh. nice speaking English Chelsea manager. What do you call him? Oh, Claudio uh, 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 Ranieri. Very hey. good. Uh, this is an athlete Don't who's named after the most famous <laughs> Czechoslovakian classical composer. Oh, uh, Janacek. No, no, no. Vorjak. Vorjak. Thomas yeah, yeah. Vorjak. Very good. And this one. Oh, first name. Oh, yeah. Used to hang around. Used to big mates with Robin. No, Robin Scouser jokes. Robin Hood? What Robin? Robin. Somebody and Robin. Batman. Oh. Ludwig van, another composer. Beethoven. Beethoven. Very good. Batman. Beethoven. Uh, right. Oh, oh, dear. Um, Beethoven. Game Boy Super Brothers. Mario. Uh, second name. 
If what a girl's uh, knickers called, short name for girls' knickers? Pants. Pa uh, pa pa yeah, pants. Pant panties. Panty. Panty. And if you were to do that, oh, panty. <laughs> panty. 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 Mario Panty. Mario Panty. 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 <laughs> So they've moved on to 19, which means that you need 14. Do you want to win? We could win. I can do this quite easily. You Normally can't. I just string it out for a laugh, but if you want to win, it's quite easy. If we win, I'll wear that jacket at the Sports Review of the Year. <laughs> there, go, there goes a few licence fees. <laughs> We've just been given five minutes. <laughs> 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 you know, when you finally get to when you finally get to watch this at home, you'll find that we're mysteriously in the lead at this. <laughs> <laughs> Only leading in two. Okay, right. you're ninety <laughs> seconds. Matthew, Matthew, right. what, what makes you think you're going to get invited? <laughs> <laughs> I've already got one. All right. Okay. Are they sending invitations out already? Don't hold your breath, mate. Don't hold your breath. They sent the breath. invites out already. <laughs> It's Can I get in with an old one? <laughs> <laughs> okay, your time starts now. Okay, snooker player. He was once scared by a Teletubby. Very uh, funny. Uh, it's Ronnie O'Sullivan. There you go. Uh, Olympic gold medalist. Very old bloke. Sometimes he gets in Steve a teletubby. Barely get out. Um, this, if this was a cooking implement, uh, it would be a Chinese. My way of what? calling a Chinese <laughs> cooking implement. Uh, what? Your way? Your way? It's our way. Well, it would be if it was a Chinese. Uh, the word. No, All right. It's uh, if it's this and wall. If you were like the bit of this and wall. Yeah, there you go. And his name is the what? Well done. All right. <laughs> This guy's got a very important job right now, but then Sven Nokia is going to take over from him. Or Peter Boobie. Taylor. Yeah, there you go. Um, this bloke's a singer, isn't he? What's he doing? Elvis Presley. No, he's a singer. He's got curly hair and a twinkle in his eye. He shouldn't be in Yeah, he's also something else. Oh, he's a footballer as well, isn't he? There you go. He's a footballer with a similar name to a famous singer. <laughs> When they, play, when they play the sport of with the foot, they kick a ball. And his first name is the same as the Lord of the Dance. Michael Yeah, Ball. Michael Ball, well done. <laughs> oh, here's a good one. Right, if you lived in the Deep South and you wanted a bit of finger-plucking fun, you'd use one of these, the second name. Banjo. <laughs> yep, and the first one is the sort of thing you'd have doing it. You'd have a lot of... Fun? Yeah, and fun then you'd banjo. go, do away me far... So? Fun's a banjo, very well done. <laughs> When I first, it's a gold medal. Uh, uh, when I first said his name, I thought Wayne and Harriet had won, but I was Audrey, confused. Audrey, Audrey, Audrey Harrison, Harrison, well done. <laughs> oh, second, last one here. If you were trying to steal petrol during a strike, the second name would come in very handy. Ken. No, like that. You'd pour things in it. The chin man wears it as a hat. Uh, a funnel. Yeah, you go. And the first name, if you're very posh and you had someone to remove these from your orange for you, her job would be the royal. Peeler? No, what do you get in an orange? Pips. The royal pipper. Very well done. <laughs> He talks about sport like my mum, Audley Harrison. He's a gold medaller. <laughs> so that means at the end of the game, Steve's team have 14, but this week's winners is Gary's team with 19. So our thanks. Our thanks to Steve, Jonathan and Matthew, Gary, Rory and Arthur. We're all off to do a proper job on the Blue Peter Garden. <laughs> My name's Nick Hancock. They think it's all over. It is now. More They Think It's All Over, same time next week. There's a case of mistaken identity in 35 minutes on BBC One, Too Much Sun. In the meantime, BBC Two provides the comedy. Harry Enfield and Chums begins in a moment. Go on then. <laughs> this new BBC video showing some of the funniest moments from They Think It's All Over is available now.